Happy Fun Fold Friday, everyone. I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Today I'm doing a simple Fun Fold Friday. It's called the Triangle Fold. But more than that, I have a lot of tips. As I was making this card today, or earlier today, um, I was coming across things that I was like, oh my, card makers need to know all this. So I'm going to be sharing all that with you. Um, some things like how to use your punch if you have weak hands. So um, I have, yeah, my hands are not strong. I can't open jars or things like that. They, My fingers, my joints hurt real bad. So I'm going to share with you how I used my punch. <laughs> um, another thing, what else? Oh, so I'm using this uh, designer paper that's going to be retiring soon, but I wanted to use a special part of it. And I was like, oh, we need to be careful where we cut it so we don't waste the paper. So, um, I'm going to share with you that. What else? Um, let's see, using the punch, the DSP, it is an Easter card. You know, we only have, um, nine days till Easter. Oh my goodness. And I'm using a lot of retiring product. We have a lot of product that's been going to be retiring, uh, by May 3rd because we have a new catalog coming out. We've got to make room for the new stamp sets, which I'm Oh, I can't wait to share those with you too. So thank you all so much for showing up this morning. I am trying to pull up my Facebook on my iPad so I can share it with you. Okay, before we get started, um, for those of you who have just found me, my name is Christina Reese and I come live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here on my Facebook page to share card tutorials with you. Uh, and Fridays, I always do a Fun Fold Friday. All right, now let me... I'm almost there. There we go. And swipe over so I can see my comments. Come on. Where are they? Nope. There they are. Tracy and Michelle, Deborah, Carlos, Diana. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday. Okay, switch over to this set. Also, don't forget, I do a card uh, kit by mail every month from the 1st to the 10th of the month. And this month I am using the Brave Vikings stamp set. So if you have this stamp set, you'll want to get this card kit. Uh, these great, you can either get just the tutorial and cut everything up yourself, or if you order the kit, I will cut up all the paper and uh, like this background here is uh, using a embossing folder. I will emboss that for you. I'll cut out the shapes. The only thing I will not do for you is stamp color and uh, do the detailed of the stamp set. So that part you'll have to do yourself. But that's the fun part of card making, right? And uh, so those are the cards that come in the kit. You get two of each, so eight cards. If you want more information on this month's card kit, please message me and I will send you all the information. All right. Uh, we're going to be making two cards. Uh, I already made one of them, but why I say that, and I need to zoom out a little bit so you all can see what I'm talking about. There we go. All right, so uh, you take a piece of cardstock here, and like I said, we're doing the triangle fold, and when you cut your cardstock, you're going to end up with two large triangles, and so it's perfect for making two cards. Before you cut it, though, you want to score. I'll do the score first down the center of both directions. So at four and a quarter and at five and a half, score, score. And then you'll need an extra long cutting device. My 12 inch trimmer, my Stampin' Trimmer does not work. Um, it Because, come here. It You need to put it in the cutting like this and it's too long. It's too long from point to point. The, the hypotenuse of the triangle is too long. So what I did is I have this uh, metal ruler that's uh, got this cork on the back so it doesn't um, slip, but it also kind of leaves like a little space there. Anyway, that's not really important. Any ruler will work, but you'll, uh, you want it to be longer than your paper. And this is a 18 inch ruler. And then I just have an X-Acto knife, uh, scoring knife. And my cutting surface is a self-healing mat. Very good investment if you don't have one of those. Um, and then you just use your scoring tool and you just cut down and you have two pieces. And let me show you what you come up with. So this is this piece. Like I said, the other piece I already created and I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, the score lines are already here for you also. So to make this card base, and you can go either way. You can make it a, um, oh, I've drawn a blank, help me. Horizontal <laughs> or 
portrait, a uh, landscape or portrait, whichever way. Um, and you can do it like you can have this top come down and this come over, or you could let's see, flip it and you could have this come down um, and this open. So either way, let me show you, fold it. So there you go. That's the triangle fold. Or you could do it the other way. You can have it this way. So whichever way you want your your diagonal to go. This way or this way. Okay? Now, with that being said, we also need to cut our designer series paper. Let me get this out of the way. And I had, um, I'm using this retiring uh, expressions of ink paper. Isn't this the most beautiful paper? Well, it has this like kind of a blank spot, which is great if I was cutting a four by five and a quarter. Uh, I mean, yeah, four by five and a quarter, but I'm not. I need a diagonal. And if I cut the diagonal, that's okay. It's just that this is in the center of the six by six, and I'm gonna, I needed it five and a quarter, which is way up here, okay? Five and a quarter, whoops. One, two, three, four, five and a quarter. And you would cut off all this pink, and so you'd only have like that much of the pink showing. But the, um, either way, um, however you want it, but you'd have a lot of white on this side. So I wanted the whole corner here and the whole corner here, but I didn't want to waste all this paper and cut, you know, diagonals like that. And I didn't want to like cut off this piece and cut off this piece. So what I did is first I made a, um, a five and a quarter, um, mark this way. I cut it at five and a quarter this way. Is that what I did? Just double checking. Let me see my card here. Yeah. Here. Oh, here's the card we're making, by the way. <laughs> really cute card. And um, I'm just double checking here. So I did that corner and I did that corner. That's right. So I cut it at five and a quarter. So let me get my trimmer. I almost forgot to get that out. So I'm coming in here and I'm cutting this up at five and a quarter. All right. But notice how it's still six inches long. And um, if you have a 12 by 12, then um, you may want to cut it at six inches and have two six by 12s. If you order the paper share from me, which by the way, we're having another paper share with the new catalog. So if you all love paper shares, um, I'll be uh, sending out information about that on my newsletter. All right, so there I have cut it at five and a quarter, and I'm just going to put this piece over there. I need to know where the four inch mark is, but I don't want to cut it. So I need a pencil, which I put my pencil away. Where did it go? There it is. Okay, I need my pencil, and I need my ruler, and I can just use this ruler here. Um, four inches on this side, okay. And then four inches on this side. And I'm not cutting it. I'm just marking it. Because what I'm going to do is I am cutting the diagonal. All right. So I'm going from this four inch. Because see, if I cut my paper at four inches right here, I lose all this. And I don't want to lose that. So we're going to cut right here. And then we're going to cut from this mark. To this corner and it's going to leave us this nice strip in the middle that we can use on another project so use the scoring the little groove here put your mark there and your tip there and get your score uh, your cutting blade and cut and there we have one and then flip it and there we have another now um, you'll notice on the top of the screen here I said measurements are on the blog okay oh is there something in the way there we go no nope. sorry um, measurements are on the blog later today so I will get it all put up there so see this piece you can use on another card later um, you can cut it off so that it's fits straight or it's long enough actually you can put it on the diagonal of the card so that's cool too so save that for another project and then you have two triangles with a lot of gold and pink isn't that fun? All right, so I shared that tip with you, okay? 
let's get out our core card here now this is where you need to kind of decide how you want this so um this piece fits here so let me show you it's you're you're not going to be able to fit it going the card going this way all right you're going to have to have it go this way there we go and now it fits so don't freak out if <laughs> freak out if you cut your card and you go oh no the paper doesn't fit just turn the card the other direction okay and voila look at all that beautiful paper yeah i'm going to zoom in a little bit i'm kind of far away don't want to zoom in too much so you can still see everything how we doing everybody there we go i've got lisa and jean and kathleen sherry mary jane Ooh, lots of you here this morning. I love it. I love it. Good morning. All right. Next thing. I've cut my card base. I've cut my designer series paper, and I was careful to cut the diagonal without wasting the paper. I need to stick it on my card. So let me get out my tape runner, and let's stick it on here. And whenever I'm using, like, a triangle piece, I like to try to get right on the edge there. Whoops. Okay. And then even in the corner a little bit. And if you have a surface that is that ah, adhesive doesn't stick to, like my self-healing mat, I just rub it right off. That's nice. That's why these, these self-healing mats are so nice. And if you're wondering where I got this, I can put it on my blog under must-have tools. So I'll do that for you. Um, I just got it at a local craft store. Okay, there we got that piece on. And now this piece. And just rubs right off. Isn't that cool? I love that. <laughs> there we go. How we doing? How we doing? Love the inspiration. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. I love that you are here this morning. I love making cards with you all. It's so fun. I know I don't actually see you, but... I see your comments and your faces next to your comments. Most of you, some of you, like Diane has a beautiful uh, landscape picture. Uh, it's so microscopic, I can barely see it. But there's Colleen and I see her smiling face. <laughs> All right, so you like it so far? This is called the triangle fold. It's just a simple, fun fold. Let's make the center. All right, so this is our center that we're gonna create. I'm gonna pull out some stuff. First of all, the Happy Easter. Happy Easter, this, um, Oh, I forget the name of these things. Word Wishes is retiring. This has got St. Patrick's, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Easter, Valentine's. This has got a lot of great sentiment, uh, holidays, um, beautiful script. So if you're looking for that, you want to get this before May 3rd. This retires and it will no longer be available. And um, it's while supplies last. So there's that. Now, it also... It, has a set called A Wish for Everything. This is also retiring. And there's an Easter saying that we're going to use on the inside, if I can find it. Here it is. May the beauty of Easter fill your heart with hope. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. And then also, if you don't want the script, you can do the block lettering for the holidays. And it also has a to and a from. It has the script stamp for happy and for wishes and the uh, and signed. Oh, it's even got anniversary. I mean, it's got a wish for everything, <laughs> just like it says. All right, I'm going to put that to the side. So there is my Happy Easter. Now, my Happy Easter, I cut out of the gold cardstock that we have, and I also put uh, adhesive backing. So I used my adhesive sheet, put it on the back of the cardstock, then I ran it through the cutting machine, and now I have two cute little stickers. Okay. There we go. So we're going to use those. This is another thing that's retiring. We have so much stuff retiring because we have so much great stuff coming in. But I have loved, I keep getting out of the camera. I have loved these um, tasteful labels. Anytime I have uh, dies that for labels, I get it because I can use it for so many different sentiments and I just love labels on my card. It just gives it a little pop. Okay, so we're going to use that one. And what else are we using? Oh my goodness. Daisy Lane is retiring, you all. Not only is Daisy Lane retiring, but so is the Large Daisy Punch, okay? If you have not invested in this Large Daisy Punch, I 
highly encourage you to. We have a small daisy punch, which that's staying. You, you can keep getting this for another year. But this large one is retiring May 3rd and while supplies last, okay? Um, and it fits the two daisies there. Um, just love this stamp set. My mother loved Gerber daisies. Gerbera, oh, there's an A on the end. I always called them Gerber, like Gerber babies, but <laughs> they're Gerber, Gerbera daisies. My mother loved them. And uh, so that's, that's what I'm creating here. I'm creating some Gerbera daisies. Um... So let's do that, and I'm gonna show. I'm gonna give you another hint on how to use a punch if you've got weak hands like mine. So where is my punch? And here is my daisies, and I've already stamped it. I'm using the pumpkin pie. To, um, if you ever Google images of Gerbera daisies, they come in light pink, dark pink, hot pink, uh, the light orange, the the bright orange, uh, yellows, all kinds of beautiful colors. All right, so uh, we're gonna. Line, oh, and when you stamp the daisies, make one petal go straight down, okay, so that it fits in the punch just like this. Now, my trick, I, and excuse my head if it gets in the way, um, I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see better. I get it in here, and then I don't punch right away because it, it's not lined up well. What I'm doing is I'm just pushing it down with my hand. Woo, I'm out of the camera. There we go. I push it down with my hand. But I still can move the card a little, uh, the cardstock a little bit. Okay, it's not real tight, but it's, it's touching. And then once I get it all lined up, I can let go. And because I'm holding this lightly, it's got the cardstock secure between the two surfaces. Now I can take my both hands and push, and I can do that so much easier than trying to do it like this because my fingers are, ju I just don't have that strength. I, well, I probably would, but it's more, it's not so much strength as it is the pain in the knuckles. So there, that's how you do it. Let me do it one more time for you. So you put your card stock in, you lay it flat upside down like this, and then you kind of get it in there and then you don't press down. You just kind of don't press down hard, press down at, but where you can still kind of move the card stock and get it all lined up how you like it. And once you've got it lined up, then you can take both hands and push. So there you go. That's how you use the punch if you have weak hands like mine. <laughs> okay? Um, another punch that's retiring is the Spriggs punch. Um, I Anytime there's a sprig or like a spray, I get it because these are great for layering. If you all like that layered technique, get get. It, whatever you can. We've got another one coming out, but that one's retiring. All right, so we've got all our daisies here. We've got this, 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 this. Um, I've already punched out the pink daisy ones, and I glued them together. I did not dimensional up, put a dimension between them. I kept them flat. Um, and here's my sprigs. I already punched those out. All right. Um, we're going to put on the, the words first so that when we put the daisies, um, we have room, and you just need a little pair of tweezers here to get this off. Make sure I've still got my people with me. Got Pamela and Kim. Oh, I love that. Kim says she worked at a florist for several years, and the Gerbera daisies were known as the happy flowers. They are happy flowers. They just, they are so bright and cheerful, and they just, they go great with this paper. It's called um, imp Impressions of Ink. Anyways, um, and it is retiring. All our designer paper retires all the time because we're always getting in new paper and everybody loves the paper. All right, so I'm putting happy on there. And if you want to make sure it's all lined up, kind of get your label lined up on some grid paper. And it is going to hang off a little bit um, because I do want enough room for that daisy on there. And the Easter. Come on. Okay, and then the E and the T, look, it fits right in there perfectly so that you don't have to space them apart so much. Okay, happy, whoops, Easter. Happy Easter. Love that gold. So there it goes with that. So it's just going to go on there like that. All right, let's get the daisy on here. I'm going to put this daisy flat, but I'm going to pop the orange one up. Um, let me get a little glue here. 
And remember, you don't want it to, well, you could have it come off the edge because it'll stick to this, but remember, you don't want these two pieces connected. So be careful when, when we put that down, okay? So I'm just gonna put glue here on this side of the daisy. And you don't need very much. Okay, and just stick that in there. Okay, hold that down for a sec. Let's get some sprig in there. I almost forgot the sprig. Um, and stick that in there now the two sprigs by themselves looks kind of sad so what I did is I punched out three sprigs and I'm gonna rip one in half so that I have three sprigs on this side and you can either have it like going there um, you can have it in the middle it looks kind of weird you can flip it over put it over here I think that's what I'm gonna do come on <laughs> the petals won't move up there we go so you can put it there. Man, no, 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 no. That looks kind of weird, so I'm going to flip it back this way. There we go. I like that. Okay, so just put a little glue here. Come on, petals. <laughs> there. All right, and then we'll put some more sprigs under the orange daisy. Or pumpkin pie daisy. Okay, we're gonna put these two days, and I do. I wouldn't. I would say use glue because you can uh, twist it so that it lines up just perfect. Because you want each petal in between the other petals, and you need to kind of maneuver it once you get it down there so it's even all the way around. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I just love these. All right. Uh, and like I said, we're gonna put this one on this side, but let's pop it up. Oops. There we go. And we're going to put it right there so there's plenty of room. It just goes right in the center there. There we go. And then these sprigs are going to go on this side. So try to balance my little card out. Now, uh, the center of the daisies. I'm going to sh show you um, what I did for the center of the daisies because they look kind of boring and plain there. Okay. There we go. Oh, isn't that pretty? That's so pretty. Okay, so like I said, that's gonna just go, whoops. You know what? If your sprigs go past your card, they're gonna bend when they go in the envelope, but that's okay, they're, they'll be fine. All right, now, the center of the daisies. So I was looking at the, uh, images of Gerber daisies on the website, and they have a dark center, okay? Not black, but m like a dark brown. Sometimes it's dark, the color it is, or a dark yellow. Do not make a circle and color it in. It will look awkward. What you want to do, if you look at it carefully, let me pull it up so you can see it. How close can I get with it staying? See how those little dots... Now, obviously, you're not going to dot, dot, dot each one, but you are going to dot, 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 okay, so that it doesn't look like a straight line. And go around the perimeter, the outside edge of the center, and then just keep spiraling in, okay? Just dot, 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 okay? And now it doesn't look like you just did a circle and colored it in, okay? It looks a little less... I don't know how to, what I'm trying to say. It just I think it looks better than a circle. It looks a little more colored in and or uh, never mind. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's the center of our daisies, and I'm still going. Mm, need something. Need something. And of course, I love bling. We have another item that's retiring. These adhesive-backed sequins. These I have used. I've used tons of these in the past years. Uh, we've had them in the catalog for a while, but they are going away. And they have nice large ones and small ones. Uh, but the large one wasn't quite large enough for the big, bigger daisy. So um, I decided to do three of each. So three here, three large ones on the large daisy. And, of course, now I'm covering up the brown, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, 
And then I'm going to do three little ones on the small one. But I'm going to use the orange. There we go. You liking the card so far? Y'all going to try some triangle cards today? I hope so. And don't forget, Easter is in nine days. So make some Easter cards. Send them out. There we go. Love it. Now let's put this on here. Remember, don't stick it to both sides. Only stick it to one side. So kind of see where you are. This daisy, whoops, out of the camera again. This daisy <clears throat> and this corner of the tag can have glue. And I like glue when I have a uh, an interactive card like this. It's the strongest adhesive that we have. Okay, one more time. I don't want to forget ah, this side. Yeah, that should be plenty. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and open it up just in case. No, because I can't, I don't know where the edges are. Okay. There we go. And we're almost finished. We have the outside. We need the inside done. I don't do the inside enough for you guys. So today I thought... I'm going to do the inside with you all. So uh, I'm going to, oh, you know what? Well, that's okay. I can stick it to this thing and then lift it up. I forgot. I like for my stamp to go off the edge. And here's my daisy here and my ink. Let's do, oh, we have enough pink. Let's do the pumpkin pie. And now this is a little tricky. So you're going to stamp it, but then you want to do, See how thin that daisy looks? We need a, a second one on top. So just, you can see the petals in between each of the rubber stamp petals. There we go. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. And then this one. And twist it. There we go. Yay! I like that. And then, of course, our sentiments. Where's our sentiment? May the beauty of Easter fill your heart with hope. And I like, I was going to put it here, and I thought, gosh, that, that kind of takes up the room for writing if you're going to write a note. So there's plenty of room for writing. Put your sentiment down here. It doesn't always have to be in the center. Okay? And put some adhesive on the back, and we are good to go. Love it. Oh, and one more thing. Okay, I've already put adhesive on here. I forgot. <laughs> there we go. The envelope. Use your retired paper to make your envelope. So um, I haven't, I don't have one here to show you, but you would just trace the envelope around the designer paper and then stick it on there. It's really pretty. Or stamp your envelope. But you always want to decorate everything when you're sending cards in the mail. I love happy mail. Okay, don't forget the card kit, the April card kit, uh, Brave Vikings, if you want more information about that, just send me a message. You can either text me or Facebook message or whatever. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I love y'all so much. And the measurements will be on my blog later today. Okay. Make sure there's nothing else on our thing here. Everybody's saying have a happy weekend. You too. Thank you, Debbie. So Debbie Bauer said the dots give them dimension. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. Okay. Bye, you guys.